It is not just health that will be affected by climate change in Jakarta. As temperatures increase, much of the city will also be vulnerable to sea level rises. The city is expanding. Poorly controlled development means more is being built in low-lying areas. By 2025, Jakarta could be about 60 centimeters lower. And much of this land may be underwater. For the people of Jakarta, all of this makes for worrying times. And the new weather patterns are not helping either. Di tahun 2008, Jakarta banjir, rumah saya banjirnya dalam sini nih. Ada masih garisnya, terus ini yang saya gunakan meja ini untuk simpan barang-barang. Karena ini mejanya agak tinggi. Nah, ini buka kamar mandi. Untuk kamar mandi ini saya uh, apa? Saya renovasi karena karena banjir kemarin. Yaya Fadlia's home is close to a river which burst its banks during the rains. She and her family had to move in with relatives until the water subsided. In the past, the area used to flood every five years or so, but now it's becoming an annual event. Musim kemarau nya lebih pendek ya, banyak kan musim hujan. Sekali hujan aja sekarang curahnya itu kayaknya lebih banyak kali turun gitu. Enggak enggak kalau mungkin kalau di setiap hari, tapi dia turunnya sedikit sedikit gitu. Mungkin yang enggak ini. Keluarnya yang ini lebih rendah lagi kan di luar. Jadi kita tinggi kalau bawah kalau enggak kita jinjit seperti ini, kita kalau kalau bawah pendek soalnya. <laughs> Regular flooding has triggered a surge in dengue carrying mosquitoes in Yaya's small community. Last year there were 18 cases of the disease, and fear of contracting it looms very large. Ya, memang kita juga agak takut ya kalau kena demam berdarah ini. Cuman alhamdulillah gitu sampai saat ini sampai kalau sampai ada yang meninggal belum kalau untuk di wilayah RW sini gitu karena kasus demam berdarah tapi kalau sudah dirawat dirawat sih sudah tidak ada yang dirawat. These days, Yaya is extra cautious, particularly when it comes to her children. Ini bahaya demam berdarah ini bahaya banget nyamuknya itu ini terus sudah kalau mau berangkat sekolah pakai lotion mau tidur sebelumnya juga kita semprot semprot rumah. She knows it's not the perfect solution, but for now. That's all she can do. Millions of families in cities around the world are facing the same health concerns as dengue extends its grip. Latest estimates predict that climate change will leave up to 60% of the world at risk, up from the current figure of 35%. Well, dengue fever, which affects 50 to 100 million people across the globe on an average year, is one of the diseases that are newly emerging, resurging, and redistributing on a global scale. Other infectious diseases are also spreading, according to climate change experts, especially those carried by insects, otherwise known as vectors. Vector-borne diseases are going to increase because with the changed climatic conditions, there are certain vectors that are going to thrive uh, much longer on a much larger scale and all of this would lead to a greater chance of disease in those parts of the world which perhaps are immune to these diseases today. Five-year-old Buluhari has malaria. For the doctors at this hospital in the Ugandan capital, Kampala, his symptoms are frighteningly familiar. This child has got uh, severe malaria, so it has destroyed his red blood cells. You can see his eyes are yellow. Because of the, the malaria parasites, they destroy red blood cells, which they break down and they get, they get yellow, and uh, they lose the blood. And you can also see his hands are pale. If you compare them with mine, you can see they are very pale. Nearly one million people, mostly young African children, die every year from the mosquito-borne disease. But the death toll could get even worse. Recent studies show that in Africa, Climate change could expose over 100 million more people to the risk of malaria by 2015, and over 170 million by 2035. For the countries affected, it will mean an added burden on already stretched hospitals and on many struggling economies. The impact can already be seen 
as malaria starts to spread to new parts of the world. We've seen a large outbreak of malaria in the highlands of Bolivia. We're seeing mosquitoes at higher altitudes, precisely where glaciers are retreating, plant communities are migrating upward, and the temperature of freezing is moving upward in the mountains. This is just the start of changes to come if climate change is underway. Climate change will affect health in several ways. You know, uh, they're going to be more frequent, uh, more severe floods, droughts. Now those have a direct impact on human health. Sandstorms and droughts are creating new deserts in parts of Africa. This in turn is triggering an increase in diseases like meningitis. Bacterial meningitis has reoccurred in the Sahel region of Africa. Drought may lead to these outbreaks by drying the mucous membranes and allowing penetration of the bacteria. The malnutrition that results during drought and lack of food may also contribute to the susceptibility of bacterial meningitis. Waterborne diseases like cholera and other causes of diarrhea are also predicted to rise by 8% by 2020, as supplies of safe drinking water are wiped out by floods, droughts and contamination. We're seeing changes occur more rapidly than even our models project because of this issue of warming as one moves toward the poles, as well as the warming of winters. The difficulty for some scientists is how to determine which diseases are caused by normal climate fluctuations and which are triggered by a long-term shift in weather patterns. Until that is settled, the exact impact of climate change on health will remain unclear, making it difficult for governments to prepare. The pity of it is that there isn't enough work being done in this area. And somehow you've got to bring the medical community into partnership with the scientific community that's, community that's studying climate change so that we can assess what these impacts are going to be in different parts of the world and start taking measures that essentially prevent what's otherwise inevitable. For cities around the world, where more than 50% of us currently live, these are critical times. While we wait for the scientists to act, is there anything we can do to protect ourselves from the march of nature and its trail of disease? In part two, the fight back begins. Jakarta is up in smoke. The capital of Indonesia is fighting back against the march of a disease which is becoming more and more deadly. Dengue fever used to occur during Jakarta's wet season, but the seasons are changing, and so is dengue. Now it is claiming victims all year round. Housewife Yaya Fadlia prides herself on keeping her home clean and disease free. Dengue has already claimed victims in her community, but she's determined to stop her children getting it. There's no vaccine to protect them, but she will do whatever it takes to keep her family safe. Even this. Meet the Jumantics, a neighborhood gang of sorts. Yaya is a founder member. The Jumantics are a squad of neighbors whose job is to check the community for larvae that could grow into fully fledged dengue mosquitoes. Every Friday, the Jumantics, which is short for the less catchy Mosquito Larvae Monitoring Group, head out to do battle with the insects. Tugas dari seorang Jumantik, ya kita periksa periksa dari rumah ke rumah, tempat-tempat penampungan airnya kalau ada yang Jentiknya kita suruh dia bersihkan, dia kuras, kan? Many families in Jakarta store their water outside in open containers. 
The result? Contamination with mosquito larvae. Kita periksa baknya ternyata ada jentik dan kita suruh sama yang punya rumah untuk dibersihkan. Bu ada di bak situ tuh bu, ini ada jentiknya. Sekarang ibu ini lihat dulu ibu kita lihat. Nah, ini ibu kan kelihatan di sini jentiknya, tuh ya. Yang jalan-jalan ke atas itu, tuh jentik bu. Jadi bu ntar dikuras ya. Kalau nanti ibu, kalau memang kurasnya ibu lama, untuk tiga bulan sekali ibu bisa kasih abate. Ini tusuk-tusuk, nanti ibu masukin ke dalam itu. Dalam bak mandi. Ya. The Germantics make their way round the entire neighborhood. It is time consuming, but for Yaya, there is no alternative. <laughs> <laughs> 